Okay, so here I am, and I'm doing one of my uh, infusion drawings. I always do these as kind of an art therapy every time I get an infusion. Uh, and I got a request to draw, uh, one of my friends said, draw anything from Star Trek. So uh, initially I thought of, you know, oh, maybe I'll do Spock or something like that, uh, because Spock's my favorite character. Uh, but then uh, I thought, no, you know, the Gorn, actually, uh, from the original series, I, if you know anything about me, you know I love monsters, so I'd say he qualified, and uh, when I do these drawings, I try not to pick anything uh, super complicated to do, where I'd have to look at a ton of reference uh, on, on my phone, uh, but uh, in this case, the Gorn is like, it's the human figure, uh, and I'm gonna just muscle mine up a bit more, uh, give it more of that, you know, comic book look and feeling, and uh, you'll see here in a minute, like here I am just roughing out, uh, it's a pretty simple pose, uh, sketching with a pretty soft pencil there, I don't keep track of the leads or anything like that, I'm I'm such a pro artist, I'm like, uh, I have the green one, so it's okay. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, these dimensions do change over time. Uh, I, I had the left arm, uh, not paper left, but like the actual left arm up uh, a bit too high, in my opinion. So I'm going to bring that down. If you can see, I was drawing the right arm a bit lower, like at the... Uh, midsection so almost like the creature has a like a come on come at me bro type pose okay well that's basically kind of like a t pose but you know what i mean it's a i'm on kind of an intimidating uh gesture and a chance to show off those claws but yeah i sketch lightly and here i don't didn't remember exactly what the gorn looked like but i remembered its basic shape so i'm like so I did, like, I want the eyes here and the mouth about here. And then there I am inside the room. I got it to myself. Now, yeah, it is a big jump, but uh, I just used the, uh, I used a couple pictures of the Gorn uh, to get a reference for the head. And here I am just filling in the claws. Um, basically, I start with very loose shapes. Uh, refine those to basic building blocks, and then go further in and add details and character and things like that. Like, uh, as I said, putting more of an emphasis on a comic book musculature uh, for the Gorn. Uh, if you look at its initial suit uh, design, it fit a pretty big actor, but they didn't really put, put a lot of emphasis on any kind of physique. And honestly, the budget of the show was, was pretty low back then, and I, I don't know, I think it's kind of like punching down to say, oh, look how cheap it looked. I'm like, well, yeah, that's actually the best they could do at the time. And fun fact, uh, a relative of mine actually did work on the original series at Desilu. He worked on some of the uh, visual effects, like doing phaser shots and, th and things like that. And they offered him a chance uh, to take some of the props home, like, uh, like actually the Gorn head, coincidentally enough. Uh, but he did keep the first test strip of footage that they used for the phaser effects. And uh, I think that's pretty cool. He's apparently got a lot of offers, and he, he, his attitude is, no, I, am, I was too dumb not to keep any props, so I'm keeping this, and... Uh, more power to you, Jack. And no, I, for any uh, Trekkies out there, I'm not going to ask him if if he could, uh, if I could have it afterwards. I mean, I was really tempted, but it was just enough to hear a bunch of cool stories. Okay, getting back to the far less interesting person, me, about the art. As you can see, uh, just refining and, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't sold on the hand position, so I'm redoing it. So yeah, now we're coming up to where 
more of my uh, favorite bits come in, uh, which is adding in some rendering and some musculature. Now, I'm not going to go as detailed with this rendering, mainly because, you know, if you're doing a drawing for, like, art therapy or just to relax, uh, find something. My advice as a completely unlicensed therapist and a definitely unlicensed artist is find some find some part of the process or the task that you enjoy doing and focus on that like for example i really relax when i'm doing a lot of shading and rendering uh oh there we go with the uh iv in there <laughs> so uh hope that didn't gross you out too much uh doing fine by the way but um yeah, this part where I start to render and put in details and muscles uh, is probably my favorite bit of the artistic process uh, because it's sort of, it's like watching a, a bit come to life. And for you, your, your art therapy could be different. You know, maybe you like doing layouts. Maybe you really like, you know, figuring out cool poses for a warm up. Or, you know, some people I've seen just, like, drawing eyes over and over again, uh, refining that. Or, you know, uh, or doing a landscape. But the point is, I think you get what I'm saying here, is just whatever relaxes you, makes you feel uh, better. I've been contemplating starting a drawing, like, at home, and then taking it and doing just the rendering while I was getting an infusion, but... To me, these drawings are something kind of special, kind of personal, uh, where I like them to be almost wholly created in uh, during the infusion. Like, I will come home, uh, come back to these drawings later, and do more to them if I really like the drawing. Uh, some of them, yeah, I take a photo, put it on uh, Instagram, and stuff like that, but... You know, honestly, it's like, uh, I don't feel that they're my best, best work until I go back and do them. But, you know, you don't, I think you should always try your best, but be forgiving of yourself. You know, if the drawing that you're doing is the absolute best you can do at that time, then be proud of that. You're, you're working hard on it. And... You know, maybe in a couple of months when you've made more progress, you can look back on that and say, geez, this sucks. I mean, I do that with my work all the time. Uh, but the point is, you're working on it, you're doing it. And I mean, I think he's turning up pretty neat, if I do say so myself. Um, one decision I decided to make, though, was not to detail the clothing. He has this kind of print on there that's a little... Um, kind of alien almost like a leopard print but i thought if i come back to this piece i'm just going to do that with copics or alcohol markers something like that give it more of a more of a cloth uh, feeling and here i i brought another pencil with me kind of a harder lead and just doing the rendering which i really enjoy doing it's fun to fill in those details and uh me personally more rendering just brings more of a believability and a character and a life to the piece. And it's like you start to get to know the character that way. Beyond putting basic shadows, it's like the Gorn are, you know, a fierce warrior race, and I'm thinking, okay, this line I extend here, oh, maybe that's a Nick he got in a fight with another Gorn commander. Or this guy could be the leader of a mutineer who... Uh, like a, like a, not, not leader of a mutineer. He is a mutineer. <laughs> oh, wow. I misspoke. He could have been leading a mutiny, taken over the ship, and now he's the captain, but he has some scars to prove it. But uh, beyond making up my own probably non-canonical backstory, Trekkies, please don't come at me with the actual history of this guy. <laughs> Although more comments do lead to more engagement. So, yeah, go ahead. Roast me. <laughs> okay, all kidding aside, uh, I like putting in more of the details and the shading with uh, and keeping in mind the textures going in. Like his scale texture, even though it's a lizard creature, he didn't 
seem to have like huge scales per se like say something like the lizard and spider-man he seemed to be fairly smooth skinned and even though that was probably the best they could do at the time i don't want to be presumptuous and say well here's what you meant i mean i did that a little bit with the musculature but apparently i am drawing the line at the skin tone but yeah whenever you do art for art therapy fun whatever just pick something you love to draw and do it uh i would say if you're in a dark place and you need a drawing to pull you out just go to your strengths and I think my strengths, if I could be so bold, monsters, I absolutely love drawing monsters. It's what I, uh, I can relate to them because I am a monster. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video, got some insight. Please like and subscribe.